Hello and welcome to Daybreak English. Today we're going to look at some more everyday British words and expressions. Hi, my name's Dawn. How are you doing today? Have you ever had a conversation with a British person and wondered if they were actually speaking English? Or maybe you thought, I know they're speaking English, but it's not the English that I was taught in school. Well, today I'm talking again about everyday words and expressions that you need to know so that you can understand and speak to British people. I have done a similar video with different expressions. So if you missed that one, you can find it here. So let's get straight into it. Seven everyday British words and expressions. The first one is skive. This is a verb for when someone avoids work or school, usually by pretending to be ill. Now, if someone is skiving, it doesn't have to be because of a pretend illness. It could be another excuse, but illness or a doctor's appointment, they're the most common. For example, he skived off work on Friday so that he could have a long weekend away. Number two is doddle. We use this to describe an easy task. We always use the indefinite article a uh, with doddle. My driving test should be a doddle. I'm a great driver. <laughs> My husband would not agree with that. Cheeky is number three. Now, normally we use cheeky when we talk about someone who's a bit rude, but in a cute or amusing way, like children can be a bit cheeky. But we can also use this adjective to describe those small, fun, frivolous activities that are a bit naughty because we should be doing something else. But they make your day a little bit sweeter, a bit nicer. They make you smile. Examples. Come and have a cheeky pint with us. Let's go get a cheeky pastry. The housework can wait. Next, we have number four, pud. It's just short for pudding. In North America, pudding is a particular type of dessert, a bit like a flavored custard. But here in the UK, we can use pudding instead of the word dessert. So all desserts are puddings or puds. So we're in a restaurant and we've finished our main course. Now let's have a look at the puds. Number five, if I'm a bit miffed, then I'm slightly irritated or annoyed, but not really angry. This is one of our ED adjectives, which shows how we feel. It's a great word, miffed. I like it a lot. I was a bit miffed that you went shopping without me. Number six, pear-shaped. If something has quickly gone wrong, then we might say it has gone pear-shaped. I have no idea where this idiom comes from or what it's supposed to mean. It makes absolutely no sense to me, but that's what the expression is. Use it with the verb to go. In past simple, it went pear-shaped. Present perfect, it has gone pear-shaped. And future simple, it will go pear-shaped, or it's going to go pear-shaped. So those are predictions. Well, this has all gone a bit pear-shaped. And lastly, number seven, rubbish. If you don't believe something, you might loudly declare that it is rubbish or a load of rubbish. That's an even stronger term. So what you're saying is that you disagree with it, but not only that, 
The whole idea is a big lorry load of stuff that should be thrown out. She's a nasty person. Oh, rubbish, she's lovely. We have never had such a great prime minister. Oh, what a load of rubbish. Okay, so I'm going to put all of this into a short conversation for you so that you can hear the words and expressions in context. The conversation is between two teenage school students. Make sure you listen out for these new expressions. Hey, Joe, I haven't studied for the English test. How about we pretend we're sick and skive off school this afternoon? No way, Bree. That test will be a doddle. We can always do it another day. Let's go get a cheeky put at that place down the road. Oh, all right. We should ask Pete as well. He'll be really miffed if we go without him. Yeah, good idea. This will all go a bit pear-shaped if a teacher sees us. Oh, rubbish. We won't see any teachers there. They'll all be at school. Did you hear them all? If not, you can always go back and listen again. Why don't you practice using these expressions in your own sentences? Write your best ones in the comments below. I would love to read them. Thanks so much for watching and wherever you are, have a great one. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like. Remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Let me know in the comments what kinds of videos you'd like to see in the future. See you again soon. Bye.